Hey everyone, it's Tracy Martirana here from Holistic Wellness with Tracy. Welcome back. If this is the first time you're visiting my channel, it's great to have you here. I post a video every week on topics such as delicious healthy recipes, meditation, yoga, herbal remedies, and Ayurveda. Recently, I have been working on a series of videos to help explain the basic concepts of Ayurveda. In a nutshell, Ayurveda means the science of life. It was developed around the same time as yoga. They consider it actually the sister science to yoga. So while yoga was focusing on meditation and asana, being on your mat, sort of tuning in mentally, Ayurveda is sort of about how you live your life everywhere else when you're off the mat. It's about how you eat and how you live your life, how you exercise, how you sleep, like just all of your daily self-care habits and how you can use those habits once you understand yourself and your environment, how you can use those habits to bring balance and live a balanced healthy and fulfilled life. I have shared with you the 20 gunas, the five elements, and the three doshas, which are vata, pitta, and kapha. We've talked about how each dosha affects your personal constitution, both physically and mentally, how the daily clock is related to these three energies. And the bottom line is, understanding that because we're all individuals that the habits that work really well for one person might be completely wrong for another so it's important to learn these concepts so you know what's right for you just because this fad diet is working really great for your best friend it might be the worst thing you could do for your health um, for some people eating a salad every day is bad <laughs> like it just doesn't work for them for other people it's perfect so it's important that's why I want to share these ideas with you so that you can learn how to bring balance to your life today we are continuing our conversation about the three doshas previously we talked again about how it affects your body mentally and physically how the daily clock breaks down into these three energies and today I want to talk about how these three energies affect the seasonal clock I'm going to start with a quick review of the three doshas because these are really to me the key concepts of Ayurveda if you understand the three doshas you can go far you don't have to break it down any further than that to me those are like the most important key concepts of course, I did start with the 20 gunas and the five elements previously because those are what feed into the doshas. But if you can just get doshas, you'll be good. So let's start with vada. Vada is made up of ether and air. Those are the two elements that make up vada. So therefore, it's light and dry and cold. It's rough and it's very mobile. Vata is the energy of movement, so it can be a bit chaotic. Physically, if a person has a lot of vata in them, they tend to have a, thi a thin skeleton, like sort of like really bird-like skeleton. They're light and thin. They probably have dry skin or they're often cold, and they can't really eat a lot at one time because, you know, they're little. <laughs> <laughs> so they usually do best if they can eat several small meals throughout the day. However, no matter how they eat, they are at risk of like an unstable digestion. Uh, they often will be constipated one day, have diarrhea the next, and in between have gas and bloating and just feel blah. So they do best eating on a schedule, eating small meals, eating moist, warm foods, things that counterbalance that cold, dry energy. Now mentally, vatas, they thrive on a schedule. They might not want to admit that, but they do. They most likely actually think that they don't and would prefer to live sort of willy-nilly here and there, but 
schedule is usually key for someone who has a lot of vata mentally. They are idea people. So they're much better at throwing an idea out there versus the follow through. They really just, you know, the energy of movement, they want to move on to the next thing. So their brain is already jumping and moving before that thing is finished. So they're your idea people, not necessarily your follow through, get it done people. And mentally to see this completely out of balance, I think of ADHD, like someone who's just can't focus, their brain is jumping from thing to thing. Um, and I know it's much more complex than that, but when I think of a Vata brain out of balance, that's sort of the energy that I think of. Now, Pitta. Pitta is mostly fire with a little bit of water. So the energy is hot and sharp. It's oily, it's light, and it's sort of liquid. Physically, someone with a lot of Pitta is going to be a little bit more athletic than a Vata. So they probably have a little more muscle. They probably have like wider shoulders, thinner hips. They just look athletic. That's all I can say. They're a little more like medium built as far as, you know, if Vata is very thin, Pitta, they're medium built. They're usually warm blooded. So they're the people who in the summer, you know, are miserable. And in the winter, they're wearing a t-shirt and they're fine. They sometimes, like their skin might be a little oily. They might have sort of red skin issues. So they might have, they might be someone who blushes easily or have rosacea. They might also end up with rashes or like just weird skin breaks out, break out, weird skin breakouts or acne or anything where the skin gets red. That is usually Pitta. They have a fast digestion. So they often suffer from diarrhea, just they eat and just things move through too fast. They also are those people who get hangry, you know, and they're, they just, their hunger is intense and it comes on fast and often. So they need to eat out, you know, they get a little angry. Mentally, they are our analytical people. They're usually very focused. They're the ones who are our problem solvers. They're following through with the ideas that Vada came up with. So Vada came up with the idea. Pitta is going to take it and run with it and make it happen. When I think mentally of this being out of, out of balance, think OCD. So it's someone who gets so caught up in the details that they can't move on to something else or they have to finish something before they can even think of something else. Like that's the energy of an out of balance Pitta. And then Kapha. Kapha is earth and water. So the energy is oily and cold. It's heavy, it's slow, it's smooth. So when you think of Kapha in the body, so someone who has a lot of Kapha, they tend to be big boned people, the people that you know, if they could, they could diet and diet and diet and they will never be thin like a Vata. They just, their structure is bigger. They often can carry a little extra weight and a little extra weight doesn't look bad on them. They just, they look okay. Sometimes it goes too far and they can carry too much extra weight, but so can't Vata and Pitta. That does happen. Uh, they have more physical strength and endurance. So they're just good for getting stuff done. They usually have the strength to be out working all day, doing physical work for long periods of time. They might have clammy hands. They have that moisture, that oily nature that sometimes lives in their hands. And issues just with moisture and mucus in general. So they might suffer from allergies or sinus issues. If they get a cold, they're probably the ones with like that hacking gross cough, no matter what kind of cold it is, <laughs> you know, and not just talking like, oh, they get bronchitis a lot, but no, they might just get a little cough, but still they're going to, it's going to turn to mucus. Mucus is their number one, their body's defense mechanism. Their digestion is slow. So they can typically eat a big meal and be full for hours, like hours can pass and they won't get hungry because it just takes that long for the food to work through. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to eat because, you know, that's what you do. You eat three meals a day, have some snacks. People have like the schedule. They might not do well with that 
normal schedule that the rest of us think we have to follow. So that I think plays into a lot of times why we see Kappa people who are a little bit more overweight than would be healthy. They're not just carrying a little extra weight. They're really overweight. And it's because they're trying to eat in a way that fits the schedule of Vata and Pitta and it doesn't work for them, but that's what they've been trained to do. Mentally, they're the nurturers. They are the ones taking care of all the support details. So their process is a little bit slower, uh, but they come up with some of the ideas and sort of all I can think of support ideas that, you know, Vada comes up with a big idea. Pitta is the one that's out trying to make it happen. And Kapha is the one in the background being like, oh, wait, but did you think about this, this, and this? Like this stuff, I know it's not like the big picture stuff, but we need this stuff. Up, the rest is going to fall apart. So that's sort of their mental role. And when you think of this mentally as being completely out of balance, I think of depression. It's lethargic and slow. It has a very depressive quality about it when it's out of balance. But Kapha, Pitta, and Vada are all really great energies, but out of balance, they can all be pretty bad. So that's why it's important to understand what your key doshas are. And we all have all three, but usually one or two kind of pop up for us to be, oh yeah, I'm really this, maybe a little bit that. Or maybe physically you might feel like, oh yeah, physically I'm very much a vada, but mentally I'm a pitta. Understanding that helps you make decisions in your daily lives that help keep balance. So let's start talking about the seasons. Now, you may have noticed that there are three doshas, but there are four seasons. So as we talk about this, there's a little bit of overlap. I'm going to start with Kapha because Kapha is late winter into spring. Spring seems like the beginning, right? So let's start there. Kapha, again, is earth and water. So it's heavy and slow. When I think earth and water, I think mud. And when I think of spring, that's usually what I think of. I think of mud. I think of the snow melting, the spring rains, you know, the earth, like all the plants, they're just thinking about coming back up. So everything is sort of earth tones, gray, browns, you know, the leaves aren't out yet. Um, it's mud. <laughs> Kapha is the energy of cohesion, of building. So again, when I think of earth and water both of those things are nourishing the plants they're nourishing the seeds they're creating life they're bringing it back right so it's the energy of spring many of us come out of winter with a little extra weight whether it's because of all of the holidays that we were celebrating or just the fact that we've been indoors not getting outside and moving around a lot eating a lot of heavier richer foods we come into spring thinking, mm, yeah, I could lose a few pounds. Then you add in this energy of spring, the kapha energy. It's heavy, it's damp, it's wet, it's slow. All of those things make that very easy to carry the extra weight, add in that spring energy, and be out of balance. All of a sudden, kapha, out of balance. So how do we counteract that? We look to Mother Nature. What does Mother Nature provide us in spring to eat? How is it nurturing us? It's giving us astringent, pungent, bitter flavors. It's giving us dandelions and baby greens and radishes and all the foods that kind of bring that light energy. That light energy is counteracting the spring energy, that heavy energy. So that is what we need. That's why I am a big proponent of eating with the seasons is because Mother Nature knows how to counteract the energy that we're feeling. In addition to just eating lighter, we often feel sort of an energy to get moving. You might call it spring fever. The energy, you know, the sun is coming out. It's getting a little bit warmer outside. We get out of the house. We get more active. That helps lighten the energy. But we also usually feel called to do some spring cleaning, some decluttering, to lighten our load all around. That is the balance that we are trying to find. Our bodies and our minds know what we need. 
And then we move from spring into summer. And you can probably guess which dosha lines up with summer. That's pitta. It's fire and a little bit of water. It's hot and it's sharp and it's drying. So that heat is like drying things out, even though there is a, like an energy of water and oiliness in there from the, you know, from the water and even from the fire. But it's drying. That heat just dries things out. So in my area, when I think summer, I'm thinking hot weather. I'm thinking of having to water my plants all the time because the sun is just drying everything out. I'm thinking sunburns and dehydration. Pitta is the energy of transformation, of changing. And when I think of the energy of the sun coming down and think of the plants changing that into their food, they find the nourishment from it, it nourishes us. It's the energy of change. Summer is the season of the sun. So think photosynthesis and you think transformation. Because of the sharpness and the heat of the sun, we're often craving wet, hydrating foods. We want iced tea and we want cold salad and gazpacho and tomatoes. And think about that. Summer harvest. What is in season in the summer? You have cucumbers and watermelon. You have salad greens. You have even like bell peppers, which, you know, cut into a bell pepper often will spray you in the face. Again, Mother Nature is bringing us peaches and squash and everything that is here to counteract that hot, dry sunshine, all that heat. Mother Nature is helping us balance it out. And next we have autumn into early winter and that, you may have guessed it, is Vada. Vada is air and ether. Ether is space, it's openness. Vada is the energy of movement. Um, so when I think autumn, I think movement. I think wind. I think of the leaves falling. I think of that dryness of the leaves, right? When you think of fall leaves, it's dry. I think of cold evenings or even days sometimes, like that cold wind bring, coming in, bringing that energy of change, that movement. Um, it's a time when you're wanting to dig out your sweaters, right? We're, putting all the summer stuff away and getting out our sweaters and our scarves and our big wool socks and our extra throw blankets. We are just trying to find that warmth in a very cold, unstable time. Because it's so unstable, we're often looking for a feeling of groundedness, which again brings us sort of to the blankets and the sweaters that does give us sort of that homey, grounded feel. If you consider the foods that are in season in the fall, you will find that these are usually warm, moist, grounding foods that make us feel warm, stable, and secure. We're talking stews and chili and winter squash, anything that's just hearty and delicious and warm. Think of maybe mulled cider or hot chocolate. Even our drinks that we crave tend to be warming and delicious and spicy. So now we understand the three doshas and how they relate to the seasonal clock, but what do we do about it? Obviously, I think I've mentioned in my descriptions of each of these seasons that eating seasonally is probably the first, foremost, and easiest thing you can do to bring a little bit of balance. So simply shopping at your local farmer's market, even if you can't shop there, just knowing what they're selling and then buying it at your grocery store, that helps. It really does. So you'll be eating lighter foods in the spring, moist, hydrating foods in the summer, and like substantial, warm, grounding foods in the fall. But what else? There's got to be more to it than just what we eat, right? Of course, there's always things you can do. In spring, when we're feeling the need to lighten things up again, doing some movements and making sure you're prioritizing some exercise into your life, highly recommended to bring a little balance. You can do some spring cleaning to feel like you're lightening your outer 
yourself, your lifestyle. Get rid of some of that junk. Clean up all the gook left over from winter when you've been crammed in your house. Get outside, maybe do a little yard work. Clean up, lighten up out there as well. Maybe cleanse inside. Ayurveda usually supports some sort of spring cleanse. Doesn't have to be crazy. <laughs> like There are some crazy cleanses out there. I'm not advocating that. But simply maybe substituting your breakfast for a juice, a fresh juice every day. Lightens things up, gets things moving. Maybe just paying some closer attention to what you're eating for a few weeks. Um, cutting out alcohol. Trying to just eat a little lighter, a little bit healthier. Just a little something to help cleanse the body. And then if you suffer from any sort of allergies or just sinus issues or mucus in the spring, ginger lemon tea is a great thing to incorporate into your daily habits. Maybe just start your day off with that or end it or have it as a middle of the day snack, whatever. But the ginger and the lemon are a perfect way to help counterbalance that. It's light, it's pungent, it's good for the sinuses and the mucus kind of cuts all of that crap out of your throat, right? <laughs> you can also do some alternate nostril breathing that also helps keep the sinuses clear. Just doing a few small little things like that, eating seasonally, drinking the ginger lemon tea, doing a little bit of a cleanse, getting some more movement, eating seasonally, those things will definitely help bring balance in the spring. Now, summer, what to do in summer? Again, obviously eat the tomatoes, the cucumbers, the peaches, the watermelon, all of that nice moist food, but there are other things as well. If you live in an area that's pretty hot in the summer, it's great if you have a pool or know somebody who has a pool so you can make a habit of daily swimming to cool the body off. If you don't, get in the habit of just taking some cooling showers. They don't have to be ice cold just not hot. Take a nice lukewarm shower in the afternoon or even in the middle of the day or whenever you get the chance, right? Just to let go of some of that heat that we carry with us. If you are a napping person, if you like naps, this is the time of the year to take naps. I would say I try to avoid naps actually in the winter because there's not enough sunshine in the day. You want to be awake for all of it. But in the summer, the days are long. So if you want to take a nap, that can be another perfect time sort of to avoid that heat of the midday, you know, take a little siesta, take a break, regroup, because really if you're getting up nice and early and going to bed probably a little bit later, as we typically do in the summer, again, because the sun is up so much longer, then sometimes a little nap in the midday, if you can fit that in, that can be a great option. Of course, many of us can only do it maybe on the weekends or on certain days, but if you can make it work and you like it, that's the other key, then give it a try. Another thing I love about summer is because the sun comes up so early, it's great to get up and get things done in the morning so that later in the day when it's hot, you're not out like still working and doing stuff. You can kind of begin to calm down and enjoy a nice leisurely afternoon Again, it helps counteract that heat. It's all good. So just trying to stay hydrated and cool. Try to avoid some of that midday heat if you can. Nap if you want to, but get up early, stay up a little bit later, enjoy the sunshine. And then autumn into winter, the Vata time. Again, eating those healthy, hearty, moist stews and soups are going to be very um, balancing for that dry sort of chaotic energy. However, there's a lot of other things that you can do in autumn and winter as well. For one, autumn and winter both tend to be very drying. It's the Vata energy. So starting your day with a nice big glass of warm water, the warmth again helps warm you. Vata is very cold. The water is hydrating you. Always good. You can add a little bit of lemon if you want. Um, the lemon is also warming. So the days during autumn and into winter are short. So again, I already said it, but 
I would avoid napping if you can during this time. You want to make sure you're seeing as much of the sunshine as you can because it's very limited this time of year. So we want that warmth of the sun to counteract that cold of the season. This is also the time though, maybe no naps, but it's the time to go to bed early. The sun goes down early, go to bed early. There's no need to stay up. You can switch up your schedule just because you typically go to bed at say 10, 11 o'clock during the rest of the year. In the winter, it's perfectly okay to say, mm, I'm going to bed at nine. You can use the extra hour or two of sleep. We tend to sort of want that hibernation in the winter, like not just because it's dark, but we're trying to counteract that balance of like all of the sort of chaotic energy of Vata. So being in bed and sleeping a little bit more, it brings balance. So it's okay. Don't feel bad about it. In the winter, you have my permission. Go to bed early. Get an extra hours of sleep. Nobody will. Nobody has to know. I won't tell. And lastly, of course, enjoy those warm foods, warm drinks. Try not to go too crazy with the sweets, but a little bit of extra sweet is okay in the winter and in the fall. Now, one last thought. We've talked about how each season is a dosha or influenced by a dosha, but what does that mean for you specifically? Now, if you are a person who has a lot of vada, then Autumn and winter are probably going to be rough on you. You're probably, your vata is probably going to go out of balance because truthfully, we all sort of struggle with balance most of the time anyway. If you are always in balance, you might not even recognize what doshas are present in you. It's when they go out of balance that you notice them. So if you tend to struggle and feel out of balance in one of these seasons, that could be an indication that that is one of your main doshas. However, we can all go out of balance in all of them, but you are more likely to go out of balance during the season that corresponds to your main dosha. So if you are a kapha person, then spring might be rough for you. You're going to feel heavy. You're going to suffer allergies and it's just not going to be pleasant. So it's important to bring balance so that you don't completely go out of balance. Pittas in the summer, struggle more than a vada in the summer. Vada in the summer is like, oh, finally, thank you. Bring on the heat. For once, I don't feel cold. <laughs> like, oh, the humidity is great. For once, I don't have to put lotion on my skin because the humidity in the air is helping. So pay attention. The more you know about yourself, then the more you can look to the seasons knowing how they're going to affect you. But if you have no idea what doshas make up your constitution, that's perfectly okay too, because just um, reacting to the seasons, the energy of the seasons, that in itself should help keep you in balance. And then if something goes out of balance that you weren't expecting, just address it. If you normally don't have issues in the summer, like normally you think, oh, normally I like the heat. And then all of a sudden one year, the heat is really bothering you, then just do something to counteract it. Take the cool showers, eat the moist foods, dress in a way that protects you from the sun, but yet still keeps you cool. You can use this knowledge to balance your lifestyle. Thanks for joining me. I hope you found this video helpful. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button, click a little thumbs up to like this video, leave me a comment. All of these things help YouTube know that people are interested in content like mine. Again, my name is Tracy Martirana and I use my knowledge of nutrition, Ayurveda, yoga, meditation, and herbs to bring you information and inspiration to help you live a healthy, happy, and balanced life. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.